Hey guys, Dan the Wolfman here for ProMMANow.com with the one and only Stitch. How's it going, Stitch? What's going on, Dan? Okay. <laughs> that's me, that's me. Um, you here, just finished up UFC tonight. How was that? How did, what do you think of the studio and uh, coming here? Well, you know, the studio is great and, you know, George Greenberg, I ran into him and, and he said he was going to bring me on board. He brought me on board with Todd Harris and well. Kenny Floyd did a tremendous way. job. And, you know, for me to be here on UFC tonight, uh, it's a dream come true, man, and uh, now here I am doing an interview with the woman. Thank you very much. You know, you'll see tonight's a great show. It's on Fuel TV on Tuesdays. Watch it every Tuesday, guys. You know the Wolfman is, and all you real MMA fans out there, they're bringing you great UFC details and exclusives about everything that's going on, the new signings and fight announcements. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a great show. Check it out, as, as well as all the, the stuff on Fuel TV that's uh, UFC content. Um, you know, they repackage the pay-per-views, and uh, it's, it's great to, to see all the, the great fights for free, you know, basically on Fuel TV. So, um, you've gone, you go back a long time, not only in boxing, you go back to early days, pretty much early days before most fans out there were following UFC. What was the first UFC that you worked? Well, you know, the, the first one that I worked was UFC 32, and that shortly lost. after uh, Dana White and Lorenzo and Frank Martina bought the UFC. No, the Jersey, New Jersey show. Right? That, exactly. Oh, and, uh, well, don't make that 33, because that was the first day of the show. Well, when I, I, I wrapped uh, Jens Pover and Dave Manet were the first two guys ever, okay. not knowing I, that these guys were fighting for titles. I mean, that was as green as you could be coming into the UFC. And finding out that these guys were, no one was there. You know, higher, knowing that I was, I was with, well, with, with well, legends well, at that point, and uh, uh, yeah, so well, the yeah. USA 32 was the first one. Now, do you see any difference between back then and today? Like, see, the fighters yeah, were rapping. They were one for both Are guys more calm uh, today, or you, you know you're going into a cage well, fight, is, you're going into a, a real mixed martial arts fight, are they, it's pretty much the same, or has the mentality changed over there? Well, you know, the, the mentality is pretty much the same. These guys are gladiators, you know, they're preparing to go to battle and all that, but, but the techniques and the style of fighting has changed. Where now, you know, you used to have some guys that were great fighters taking a guy that was an okay fighter, now you have guys that are all good fighters, and uh, so the game has really progressed and the fighters have gotten better. Yeah. And particularly, you know, you came from the boxing, so I'm sure you right. appreciate the striking level, the striking level's gone way up, you know, just just a higher and higher level. Are there any guys that you really like watching as, as far as a fan, kind of, as far as the striking is concerned? Well, you know, there's this young kid that just fought in the uh, tough, that just won uh, the last, this last, this last Friday. Justin Lawrence. Yeah, just, yeah, Justin Lawrence. Great, kids, great, yeah. great boxing skills. And when I saw him warming up in the dressing room, you know, I even told Dana in the ring, I said, this kid has some great boxing skills. But the game has really progressed to the point where it's gotten... Rashad Evans is very good with boxing. Rashad Evans has very good hands. Actually, that's my original, my first boxing gym in Lansing, yeah. Michigan, Crown Boxing Gym, is where Rashad Evans started. And he's got great hands, fast hands. It'll be interesting sure. to see him take on John Jones, see if he can close the distance against that enormous reach of... Uh, John Jones, and then he got the up-and-comers like Justin Lawrence is, you know, obviously really impressed me. I'm looking for him and Miles Journey on, on, on tough to possibly do great things. H heck of a left hook, you know, and he got the knockout with a, a step out seven, I call it. His hand wasn't even closed, he got that knockout. So, um, you know, the, the level in the UFC is, is really just growing and growing. What about Pride Days? You were also... Yeah, I, I tell you, Pride was, uh, was like no other organization at that was like no organization <laughs> wasn't it? You know, I used to go there with Josh Barnett and uh, you know my first pride fight was at the uh, uh, at the Tokyo Dome, it was like seventy thousand people and, and to me it was it was phenomenal and you know they would have the New Year's Eve shows that were phenomenal and uh, you know I got to meet some of the great fighters. I mean Krokop and Fedor and guys that I've worked with before now, working with them now and Shogun and Bandelay Silva and all these guys that were legends, you know, and, and Josh Barnett obviously. But, uh, you know, to work with them hand in hand in the UFC, them coming from Pride was, was, a, was a pretty good honor for me. And, you know, the, the Pride people asked me to do seminars for, uh, for the fighters and the trainers and the medical people. And so I got them, I organized them on how to properly wrap hands because in the old days of Pride, the only rules were there no, yeah. there were no rules for wrapping hands. Guys would roll up tape and put them on their knuckles and all that. And, uh, you know, it, none of that made any sense, so I got them on the right track. That's, that's great. I know, like Josh is, Burnett has talked highly about. He wants you at every single fight. And every, he said every single fight, he wants the best chance of winning and making sure you're in the corner in case there's a bad cut. He knows that 
I don't think there's been a cut that you haven't been able to stop and, and allow the fighter to go back in there and put his skills on and maybe still win the fight. I don't think there's a, is there a single thing that you couldn't, um, you couldn't stop? You know, man, that's a good question, but uh, I've been pretty fortunate, man. You know, really to, fortunate. To, to work on these cuts and, and give this fighter the opportunity to go out there and, and win a fight. And, uh, you know, Josh is no exception. And, I mean, Josh knows that. He's smart enough to know that I'm like an insurance policy, you know, is, is if you don't use me, then you still pay the, you know, but if you do need me, then, then the dividends pay. Then it definitely pays and, off. And, and that's what happens there. Now, I was fortunate. I never got cut in any of my fights, but I got cut in training. I took a knee at Miltage's camp, and boom, it, you know, had that been a fight, I would have wished you were, were there. From state to state, is your job a little bit, are certain coagulants allowed in some state and not in others? Are you just using Vaseline? What, what do you use? Well, well, in, in the United States, that's a good question. The United States, for the most part, they use all three. The adrenaline chloride, one, 1,000 is our primary one. That's one in the swab that closes up the blood vessel. The abatine and throbin are coagulants. Uh, they're authorized, but I don't use them. I just use 100% the adrenaline chloride, one, really? 1,000. Uh, but throughout the United States, all that is, is okay. You go into other countries and the only thing that's allowed is the adrenaline. So you but, got the adrenaline, you got Vaseline, you got your cold swirl. Um, is that pretty much the tools of the trade? Is yeah, it, yeah, that's pretty simple. And then the the Vaseline, hands, you know, sure the Vaseline, exactly, and then gauze and tape. And, you know, that's the thing about being a cut man. We're still, still a very basic foundation, but a very important foundation. It's like an engine. Yeah. You know, you, got, uh, you have the pistons and we are... The pistons without those you can't run. What, what, what about when you got a bad hematoma under the eye, or your eye is closing? We've seen many times in boxing, a few times in MMA, even in a recent female fight in strike force. Um, what does the cold swell really get rid of that? Do you push the blood out? Well, well you, you you don't push the blood out. That's a, that's an old boxing myth. And, and okay. you know, if you talk to the doctors nowadays, what happens is when you have a hematoma, you have a puddle of blood that's accumulating underneath the skin tissue. And the old adage was you would try to push that away. Well, you could push it away, but it comes right back. Okay. And now it just expands into tissue that wasn't damaged before. Okay. But, you know, the bottom line is to, to stop swelling. There's a cold compress. Hopefully that you close up the blood vessels and blood coagulates itself. The colder it is, the better it is. Okay. That's why even if you get cut, you just put pressure on it. We've seen hominic with an egg like an alien. Yeah, nothing. We would, so. nobody was going to do nothing with that at all. Okay. Well, you know, thank you for your time. Is there anything uh, you, you, you want to plug or t uh, talk about or anything like no, that? No, it's just, you know, thanks for having me here. And like I say, it, uh, I'm real stoked to, you know, fly in from Las Vegas, come here to the Fox Studios and, you know, do UFC tonight. I'll feel. It doesn't get much better than that. And then finish up with an interview with the Wolfman. <laughs> thank you very much. You guys <laughs> check out Inside uh, UFC Tonight on Fuel TV, as well as all the great UFC content. Please uh, go to ProMMANow.com. Go to TheCombatSystem.com for all your MMA needs. Got hundreds of videos, instructional videos. And if you can, you know, friend, uh, uh, subscribe to my YouTube page at DanTheWolfMan1 and like the videos. Thank you very much. Bye, sir. All right, thanks for that.